Hi, I'm Helen and this is Vivo. We've got another jam-packed episode for you. Irish legend Sack talked to us about those rumours of a comeback. Upbeat down boy Owen Colgan talks about his move from medicine to music. An Irish singer Ingva returns from London to play live at the Odessa Club. And finally, Irish music blogger Niall Byrne talks to us about the state of Irish music. So he's hung up his white coat and picked up his guitar, and the music industry are taking notice. Singer Owen Colgan talks to us about his passion for music, touring, and his new single, Dream Satellite. Now, Owen, I can't deny the fact, I know it's all about music, but you studied 11 years as a doctor, is that right? Uh, well, yeah, no, I studied five years at Queen's and then yeah. I've been working the last kind of seven or eight years, yeah. And so what took you on this journey to become a musician? Uh, probably the two things, or the two careers coexisted for a while. I kind of started music in college um, in Belfast and it was just living with musicians in my first year and I not long picked up the guitar and they were encouraging me to play and then we just started the open mics and gigging in Belfast and then it just became a bit of a passion and then over the last few years I just wanted to to pursue the music more and more and then you know the two careers are quite time consuming so after a while I just had to kind of decide well if I'm ever going to give the music a go I'm going to have to just lay off the medicine for a while. Well they say music's medicine for the soul so you're still doing some good for people no doubt. Oh I don't know you tell me. <laughs> I hope so, I hope so. I mean I'm still working um, I set up my own record label and I'm doing this kind of mostly myself. I still work just to, to fund that, so I work through an agency in, in Glasgow and still work occasionally, but uh, yeah, trying to do less of that and more of the music, you know. And was music always in your blood or what kind of prompted you to start a career in music? Do you know what wasn't? Uh, well, I mean, it, not playing wise, I mean, my family is very non-musical. My brother is a massive music lover. Um, and he's a wee bit older than me and he handed me down all his cassettes and from you know primary school I was massive into music and my brother took me to my first gig in the Point Depot here in Dublin when I was 11, it was James Brown. I've always been a big lover of music but I didn't, I was, I was more into sport when I was younger and kind of drifted out of sport in my late teens and then started to play the guitar um, and then it was as I say really only just at college when I started to kind of write and perform and then slowly it became a passion you know so it wasn't really in the family prior to that it's quite unusual to see people starting a career in music so late and um, yeah. was it do you find it was more difficult was that like did you find it harder then for you to catch up with your peers yeah not really um i think it's i think you can start at any age really you know i think you fit into whatever whatever's going on at the time you've been playing lots of gigs at the moment and what have been what has been your personal favorite gig that you've played so far yeah, well, as I say, we're playing more and more. I mean, I, I guess a little bit when I was working as a doctor, it was um, kind of hard to, to, to gig as much as I wanted to and certainly to tour. Um, so I'm doing that more. I'm trying to catch up a little bit in that way. So this is our first big tour at the moment. So we're touring Ireland and Scotland. We were very lucky. I got some recognition in London last year or the year before. Was that for the O2 Undiscovered yeah. 2007? That was amazing, that must have been a huge kind of boost to your career. Oh, it was and that was the final push to, 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 to give up the medicine, yeah. you know, and I just thought on the back of that, I mean, if I'm ever going to do this now is the time, yeah. you know, to build on what little bit of impetus that gave me, you know, so, yeah, so on the back of that there we got some recognition and we got invited to play some big gigs and probably one of the biggest was the Q Awards uh, launch party at the O2 Arena so that was cool and we opened the show and then following after us was like Kate Nash, Hard Fay, Athlete and the Manic Street Preachers closed the show you know. You're in the middle of recording your debut album at the moment and yeah. um, what should people expect it to sound like or for the, you, what would you like it to sound like more importantly? Yeah well I hope it's I hope it's versatile um, you know, it's it's. I'm a singer-songwriter, so there there is the usual kind of acoustic-y love and loss type songs. But then we're 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 trying to break it up a little bit with some rockier stuff, some funkier stuff. The new single's a fast pop song. When we were coming up to write the single and and, and record and the tour and stuff, I kind of figured, you know, people probably don't want another mopey singer-songwriter <laughs> now. You know, during credit crunch, they probably want a bit of a 
you know, a bit of a release. A bit of a knees up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a bit of a knees up, you know, and hopefully that's what it is. So we got our mates down for the video and stuff. We just sent out an email, you know, to our mates and our fans saying come down and they all came down and we just had a laugh and hope that comes across. It's just about having a good time. Well, Owen, I'm looking forward to hearing the album and thank you so much for talking to us. And now we're going to have a look at your video. <laughs> He might have moved to London recently, but singer-songwriter Ingva hasn't forgotten his roots. He was back in Ireland for Live at the Odessa sessions recently, where I caught up with him and his new band. A lot of people probably don't know, but you recently moved over to London. Um, why the big move? Um, well, I guess there's a, a couple of reasons, but the main ones were that, I mean, I love Ireland and it's a great country to develop as a musician and as an artist but at the same time it's quite a small market and there comes a point where I guess you can you can either break that market or you can get a bit complacent and stagnate and I guess I was rather than find out which it was going to be I thought that I'd try and move to London and that's where some of the people that I wanted to play with had, had moved to as well so it made sense. It was not quite intimidating at first? No, not at all. I mean, I guess in Ireland, the great thing about it is there's lots of support between between musicians, and you know, and there's there's plenty of opportunities for you to to play when you're an emerging act. I thought it might be intimidating, but I didn't think it was. I think it's, I don't know, it's kind of fallen into place rather quickly over there since we've moved over. So your album Tell Me This has been compared to Dylan. How does that kind of comparison? That's the first. With you, I've heard that's that. The first I've heard. It. <laughs> Jen, <laughs> Who said that? I don't know. Read that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, any comparisons like that are nice, but I mean, you're trying to carve your own niche, and of course, I, mean, I, I love Dylan. I love the Americana sound. Everything from Neil Young to Ryan Adams to Bright Eyes or M Ward, Rilo Kiley, any of those. What inspired you to get into music in the first place? Um, I guess it was. Uh, I mean, I grew up around music. My, my dad was in a, in a blues band. He played drums in the band, so Damien knows all about that. <laughs> and um, so, from a young age, we were surrounded by, by blues music, I guess, essentially, and that led to the open tunings, which do feature in our set quite a lot at the moment. And and that whole style of music and lots of lots of vocals. My dad was in a band that they just every weekend they'd just come around and jam. There was Twelve of them in the band: four guitar players and two keyboard players and two drummers at one point. For your um, single, Little Boy, you actually had a really amazing video made. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, yeah, well, it kind of came about by me entering the song into a hot press competition and to be have a music video made for it by the Tisch School of Music, which are based in New York, but they have a semester in Dublin. And um, yeah, Little Boy won as one of the, I think, 12 songs or so that were selected. And we had a girl called Kelly Carnan from New York who um, who uh, yeah, made a really lovely video for it. The concept was to, to have a few little, you know, little boys or children in the video, kind of just showing, displaying a different range of emotions, and then also to have, you know, some of the musicians that originally sang on the album track. So myself, Benny, and uh, Michelle Considine, the three of us, were in, the, were in the video. But it must be really great to have a video like that made because it pushed your music out into, I suppose, a different platform. Because it's been, it's feature, we're featuring it at the moment on IMTV. Yeah, no, it's, I've seen. It's been great. It's been great to have your support and. Uh, I guess that, yeah, we were, we were trying to push the video medium a bit more in London as well, but didn't really get off the ground. And so it came about, and it's great to be able to just go into a project like that yeah. without having to really do the whole coordination of it. You're just yeah. kind of, you're going in as a musician, as an artist, yeah. or as a songwriter. Someone or else is taking care of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, logistics wise, we didn't have to plan too much. And what's the plan for the summer? Are we going to see you back in Ireland? I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I think we're going to be doing another tour here at some point. But at the moment, we're concentrating on uh, getting some festivals. Uh, our festival slots booked in, so anything uh, in the pipeline at the moment? Yes, but I can't really say because oh, I, no, I, otherwise I'll get too excited. It won't change. Too excited? Yeah, too excited. Yeah, oh, too excited. Can I guess? There's, a, there's, a, there's a couple of good UK festivals that we've yeah. been uh, mentioned for, but again, it's too early to say. <laughs> okay, well you'll have to keep us posted. We will. You'll be the first people to know. I Great, promise. and we'll keep yeah. everyone updated on our website. Yeah. Guys, I can't wait to see your gig tonight. Thank you for talking to me. Best of luck in your his blog, Nile or Nine, is read by thousands every day and he's become an authoritative voice in what's happening in the Irish music scene. 
So Niall Byrne caught up with us to tell us who we should be looking out for for 2009. Your blog, Nyler9.com, is was set up in 2005 and you've won the award for Best Irish Blog, for, uh, Best Music Blog for best the last Irish three years. Blog, yeah, yeah. Um, what's that like? Um, well, it's good fun. It's like, it, it wouldn't take it too seriously, but it, uh, it's nice to be, I suppose, recognised in some way for, for a small achievement, whatever you do, you know. Um, I mean, I started my blog because I was always annoying people about music, my friends and whatnot, so it just made sense. Uh, at the time to just start blogging about it and I, I got into all the all this international music through the music blogs which were just around at the time and it was just really great and um, I just said okay why don't I do it as well and at the time nobody knew anything about it nobody sent you emails about it or anything like that now it's much different like how do you go about finding bands because like I suppose you would be kind of a source of information and contact for people who want to discover new bands and see what's happening in the music scene yeah. so do you have to go to hundreds of gigs or just research loads um, oh well I mean I love going to gigs so I'll go as many as I can but otherwise it's a case of you know uh, looking at MySpace pages, getting PR emails, you know, filtering out the bad, and there's always a lot of bad. And tell me a bit about you. You work uh, with State, well, it was State Magazine, yeah, as there. Mag yeah, I'm, I was assistant editor for State yeah. Magazine, which is now a fully okay. online entity, which is actually suits me fine, to be honest. <laughs> the hassle and, and your niche. Of, yeah, the hassle and stress of actually producing a print magazine is a, a lot more uh, difficult, especially in like these hard financial times yeah. you know it can be quite hard so the website's doing really well and uh, what we basically wanted to do is offer something that wasn't there before um, really well written articles and reviews and you know mp3s and videos and stuff like that taking taking advantage of the stuff that mp3 blogging has really uh, you know brought to the fore in terms of music and media. Well, seeing as you are the authoritative voice in Ireland at the moment on the Irish music scene, who do you think are the hot bands that we should be looking out for for 2009? Um, 2009 uh, Irish bands, uh, well, I'm still really into is about Headers, uh, who released their album last year, and they are an amazing talent. Um, and they're doing, they're picking up lots of press and interest abroad and they're only, they're only the two of them are just 19 year old twins i've just been listening a lot to uh, the 202s who are signed to a french label and just released the albums didn't come from nowhere belfast at the moment has loads of really good bands yeah. uh, john shelley and the creatures who um the soundtrack in northern ireland tourist board ad i really like grand pocket orchestra as well good band um but like this so i could actually sit here all day and and, and <laughs> ream off no i could i could because there's so many good bands yeah. at the moment that's what I really like about Irish music at the moment, just because it's so different. Everyone's getting in and... Everybody, well, everybody's doing something that nobody else has done before, so that's nice. And there's also like a really good DIY scene at the moment, which is... DIY music? <laughs> well, DIY involved in, in uh, house parties and, and uh, events put on in, in people's sheds and whatnot. Brilliant. And, uh, and I think it might be a direct result of the recession, but there is definitely uh, some stuff like Hideaway House and Leeds Grange and... Um, there's another one, The Shed, Box Social, I think it's called. Well, if people want to find out more your blog, it's www.nyler9.com. Um, lots of information there, lots of great music. Um, and thank you so much for talking to us. Thanks. Cheers. There are loads of gigs happening over the next couple of weeks. And here are our top five. On April the 30th, the Chapters are launching their new album over in the Academy. On May the 1st, Irish hip-hop duo Messiah J and the Experts are also playing in the Academy. On May the 2nd, or SAG, rarely seen above ground, is playing in Whelan's. On May the 3rd, LA band Airborne Toxic Event are going to be playing in the Academy. And finally, on May the 7th, The Pale are going to be playing in Whelan's to promote their new album, Proper Order. In the 90s, they toured extensively with Morrissey, building up legions of fans all around the world. And now, Dublin band SAC are back, and they talk to me about how their perspective on music has changed over the years. Feel the draw from the top to the bottom. Like you said, you've just started gigging again since November in the Button Factory. Um, what prompted the whole return to gigging? Um, I suppose, like, Derek was in the band a long time ago, and... Uh, he was over last spring and just, just got talking and we haven't done anything in for about four years and uh, we said he'd love to have a jam mm -hmm. and you know we've all been doing different jobs in, within the industry, DJing and yeah. writing for magazines and stuff like that. So we uh, we said yeah we'll go for it and we came over one summer's weekend and we went down to a house down in Wicklow and we just started jamming and we said yeah felt good so why not get back and do something. Does it feel like the good old days now being back together again? 
Hasn't changed a bit. Really? Still annoying each other. I know, it's good. It's, it's actually good. because we met our first uh, manager in town today as well. It was like we were all in in this cafe together and he walked in. It was like being back in the 80s, you know. Did he offer to manage you again? No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> He's too busy now. He's got kids and all that. Ah, so. oh, family man now. Of the bands that are around at the moment, is there any um, favourites for yourselves that you'd be listening to? Who do you like? Me? Oh, there's so many. I can't even think. <laughs> Um, it's actually, I think the music go. scene now is probably the best it's been. Really? Since when I, I started listening to music when I was about 11, 12, sort of post-punk stuff, and it was really buzzing. There was so much new stuff. Everybody that came out seemed to be better, and there was just so much different variety. And I think now it's actually probably better than that. There's so, coming like the sort of folk stuff, the new indie bands, there's just so much good music out there. Like really, I, I listen to a huge variety of music, so. I think after the whole boy band thing, just it just got <laughs> so saturated that, you know, and then with dance and all, even though some of the dance was brilliant, mm. the, um, like the, you know, I think the Strokes were probably one of the, the bands that really broke it all back. Like back in the day yourselves, you were nominated for quite a few awards, you won a Best Video Award. Um, is that the kind of a success that you're looking for again? Do, like, do you think that you'll make that kind of comeback or is it purely for the love of playing that you're back together? That really, the love of playing and it's, we take it serious but it's, a, it's almost like a hobby in a way. We're not looking to sign, get a record, which is great, there's no pressure. We just, I mean we put out records, we're looking to write new material yeah. but I think it's more, it's, if we had to go, I wouldn't want to come back if it was like, that's like trying to get a deal and doing all that. To go on tour would be great again, all over. Yeah, yeah, you toured so much in the 90s as well, you know, like that must have been a great experience for you all. Yeah. 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 That was amazing. Especially Highlights? The, well, the tour, two tours of Marcy. Yeah, that was for, amazing. Yeah, well, especially in America, I mean, the whole, the atmosphere and the whole behind the scenes, going out on the road for three months when you knew every day you were doing a gig to like five, ten thousand people, like, you know, it was great. Is it true that you were formerly known as Lord John White? Yeah. Why? <laughs> um, people probably say why for sack, but... Well, actually, I was gonna, that was my next question, why sack? Wow, Scotland. I'll tell you, actually, there's a, there's a band from Scotland called Orange Juice, and they had a single, yeah. and the B-side of that was called Lord John White and the Bottleneck Train, and that's what the band were originally known as before I joined. And then we had a song called Sack, yeah. and the manager who I mentioned earlier on um, noticed that our sound was kind of changing, and it was kind of getting a bit harder sort of sound. and. Uh, he thought Sack was a was a better name for the band, a shorter mm -hmm. name. It was kind of a, you know, it was fashionable at the time as well, like bands like Ride and, <laughs> you know, you had to have a four-letter name, you know, mm -hmm. one-word name. So do you think you're going to release an album or are you just going to keep gigging and see where it brings you? Well, it'd be nice to record some new, new material for us and, yeah. and get Derek to come over, you know, again and, and, and you, you know, have a, a whole week of, of rehearsing really and just kind of trashing out stuff because, you know, you know, I have loads of lyrics and John has m music and stuff, but we need to all get get together in the room really you know thank you so much for talking to me no, guys cheers, it's a pleasure you. cheers and that is all we have time for in this episode of reverb i've been helen and thank you for watching <laughs>